Um, yes, um, Linda, we are keeping attendance um, for the Wasota sanctioning. So if any of you guys are here from Wasota or Wasota Racetrack and you want to use one of uh, this as one of your um, uh, one of your you know Wasota sessions that are required, um, you know, we are keeping track of attendance. Um, if you want to make it a lot easier for me to keep track of attendance when we're done, you can shoot me an email um, and say, hey, from this racetrack, um, attended you know one session or both sessions or whatever else. Um, that will be great as well. Um, so I'm going to jump in. I'm going to get started here and uh, kind of show you everything. We're going to start with uh, an in-depth look at registration. And I want to show you everything about registrations. So if you have questions about registration, hopefully I can answer them now. Um, let me start by presenting my screen here. There it is. Okay. All right. So you should be able to see uh, my screen with your favorite track. I'll use um, that again as an example, um, and we can kind of go through things that way. So I will start here. Uh, registration, obviously, in season management. So we'll jump right in here to registrations, and actually, my my event that we're going to focus on here is the 2021 season. Uh, again, I, as we mentioned before, uh, you know, I'll, I'll repeat it here. There are three different types of registration um, in our test demo track. We've um, oh, a lot of people are coming in. That's good. In our test demo track, we already have set up um, a, a yearly registration. So, you know, think of this as a uh, once a year annual thing that you can have your drivers register for. Um, you can charge for this or not charge for this or whatever else. Um, there's also an event specific registration, which is what we'll add here. Um, the process is the same for all of them. So you would type in the date of the event that you want the registration to be for. We're going to do our May 1 event. That is the registration we're going to do. Um, we'll not have an entry fee. You can charge entry fees for any of the registration types. Um, so, um, if you know, it, the, the way that that works is that when you charge an entry fee, when the driver registers, we collect the funds and then we disperse those funds to you through PayPal. So if you want to charge for registration, you have to have a PayPal account set up and you want to make sure that we have the email address associated with your PayPal account. And then as soon as we get those funds, when the driver registers, you confirm the registration, we send the funds off to you to PayPal. We don't collect any fees at my race pass. The only fees you have to worry about are whatever PayPal charges. This is a this is a, you know a product inside of the application. This is what you pay for already when you buy the application. We're not going to charge any extra fees for this tickets or really anything else. Um, you can also um, you know add a late fee if you want. If you're doing an event specific registration where this comes into play the most, you want drivers to register a week before, you can, you know, make it more money to register after that. Um, you can also have, you know, when the registration closes and all those types of things. So we'll add this registration. And here you can see it. Um, you can make it active down here. So if you, you know, prepared this in advance, you didn't make it active, you come here to make it active. Bang. Um, entry fee, zero dollars. The open date, the close date, the stock car special, all of those things are right there. Um, the MRP stock cars were the class that was selected for this event. So that class is here by default. If in your event that you're doing the registration for, um, there were 10 classes that you're running that night, you would see all 10 classes listed here. And uh, again, there's an additional price next to each class. So if you want your baseline to be 50 and you want your mod your modifieds are going to be $100 to register, you add another 50 here, or your stock cars are going to be 70, you add another 20 here, things of that nature. Um, the question that I got here is, is this only in US dollars? Is there a Canadian option? Um, frankly, I don't know. I've never been asked that question before. I'll double check with you, Brenda, and uh, and we'll, I'll get back to you. Now, I've never seen an option to change this to Canadian dollars, so I assume that the answer is going to be no, but I'll verify that and get back to you here, hopefully before this is done. If not, I'll, I'll send an email tomorrow. Um, yeah, you can add, you know, again, late fee, additional price, whatever else. Um, there's a share button all the way down here on the bottom of the screen. You can use that share button to push a link to this registration to your social media accounts, so Facebook and Twitter. Um, so as soon as you're ready for this to be public and live and whatever else, you can notify your drivers with that share button. 
And then this online registration button actually, you know, takes you to where the registration would be. Of course, I didn't save after I made it active. So now we'll try that again. Perfect. I can register on my race pass. This is what a driver sees when they register. I'll take you through this view. This is the driver view. I'm going to register for the stock cars because that's the only class that's available. If you had multiple classes, again, multiple would be right there. Um, if a driver has registered for an event before, all of their information would be saved completely. Um, because I've not registered for an event before, I'll select that I am a new competitor. And I'll let it continue. Okay, and again, if I had done this before, all of this information would be saved. So if a driver is registering for the second time, it's literally like three clicks and it takes two seconds. But I will enter all of my own information here. Let's see if this pre fills all of it. Perfect, 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 perfect. Old squirrel wrong, but you get the idea. We asked for jacket size. So all of that stuff is in there. If uh, the if there's a if the driver is racing someone else's car and there's a car owner, it'll you can enter the car owner information here as well. We're not going to do that in this case. You, we ask for multiple. Um, we ask for multiple number options to prevent there from being duplicates, things of that nature. Just south of Winnipeg, I know somebody from Winnipeg. He's lost an entire year of his career due to the uh, the border issue going on. Perfect. But there's all the information there. We can continue there, and I'm sure that the extra car number is required. Okay. I'll be my own emergency contact, and there we go. So that's what a driver sees when they register for an event. That's all they have to do. Agree to the terms and conditions, confirm the information is correct, and we are processing and ready to go. The only thing you didn't see in that view is, um, is you know, the again, adding owner information and um, something along the lines of payment because we didn't include payment. But that's what the driver sees when they register. So you can actually see it's a pretty quick and easy process for them. And, again, if they go to register a second time, I mean, it's really fast because most all of that information is saved in there. So if I'll go back to my registrations for the stock car special, you can see that I have one pending registration here. So as I'm coming in as a track, when I go to confirm that registration, there's all of the uh, information for the driver. I'll add in the driver's name here. to link it to their profile. And I'll add the number that I want them to be. Allow duplicate entry as if... You know, they're, uh, they're running in more than one class, basically. And then um, has all forms is a new option that we've implemented very recently. It's a way, tracks have been requesting a way to keep track of um, forms outside of my race pass for a while now. And this is really the only good way to do it that we found. Um, so if, uh, if a driver, you know, if you're doing tax forms, doing pit registration forms, any kind of paper form that they're going to have to turn into you outside of the program, um, when you're entering or when you're confirming the registration, if you, they've turned them in, great. If they haven't, that's fine, too. So we'll confirm that, and we'll go from there. So there you can see the registration is available. Um, at this registration point, you can view their invoice. Again, there is no invoice here to view, basically, because I didn't charge for this one, but you'd be able to see if they paid. Um, if they are going for a rookie of the year, basically. Um, if they have their own MRP card, which we'll get to in a second, and if you've confirmed them. Again, um, there's a blue pencil icon off to the right giving you a number of other options as well. You can change the class that they've registered for if they mistakenly registered for the wrong class. You can view their registration form, um, which gives you a bunch of information. You'll see on the bottom of this registration form, we've also included a competitor signature line, a date, and a social security number, a federal ID number. 
Um, the reason for that is, is we don't gather any um, any information uh, in regarding social security numbers at all. We don't store social security numbers. But if you want to get social security numbers um, and, and you know do that, you can print this form off for all everybody who's registered. You can bring it to the back gate. You can have them write in the information that way. It's a way to keep track of it. But again, inside the MRP program, we don't store social security numbers uh, for tax purposes. Um, and again, you can um, edit information, edit their name and city, edit the information, add, add any additional info um, in terms of transponder numbers, all of those types of things. You can do those after you've confirmed the driver right here in this registration window. There's also a third type of registration, and I'll show you that here quickly. It's general registration. We have it labeled here for a non-racing event, um, but if we go through that, you'll see all of the options are absolutely the same here. With the general registration, what we typically see it used for is something like, um, you know, like I just mentioned, uh, you know, some kind of a driver or crew appreciation party or something like that. Um, you can uh, you can use it for something along the lines of a banquet. We see banquets, you know, instead of selling tickets on Facebook or whatever else, you do it this way. Um, so you can do those things as well here, make it active or inactive. Largely, you're putting in and gathering the same information, although I will say a general registration gathers less information, um, but it allows you to, uh, you know, have something else that you want to do um, that way. Perfect. Does anyone have any questions and feel free to unmute yourself and shout them out. Does anyone have any questions about registration before we move forward? Austin, you need to yep. pay attention. You got people raising their hands and they are talking into the meeting details. Just FYI. Okay. In the, okay. Well, in the, uh, in the chat, um, I see, you know, It'd be real nice if you did. Uh, asking for a do-over. Uh, hey, I'll, I'll I'll get with you guys tomorrow. I'll send you an email, and if you want to have a one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, situation or something like that, I'll, I'll take you through all the registration details again. Um, if you want to use that amount for pit parking, you absolutely can. But um, you know, whatever you want to charge for there, you, basically, we're just sending you that money via PayPal. So whatever you want to put that money towards, whether it's pit parking or registering or whatever else, that's kind of free to to do whatever you guys want to do. And, and again, we don't, we don't, um, we don't do any with thing with social security numbers. So we're not able to that way. So you can't encrypt the information like so many other programs do. Is that what you're we, saying? We, we don't have an encrypted server. So no, we, we don't encrypt that information for social security numbers. Okay. Perfect. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go through a race management then. Um, this is obviously a race night from start to finish. This is the, you know, the big selling point of my race pass is how easy we make it to organize an event here. Um, so I wanna show you all the options and information here. Um, I'm going to go to the correct event here. Got one started up here. We're gonna go through the same event that I just registered for, um, the, the May 1 event. Um, we'll start, you know, right up top with the uh, with the overview, obviously, Oh, excuse me, I'm not in race management, there we go. So right up here, top of the setup. The setup um, allows you to pick your transponder, um, basically how you wanna handle transponders, and it allows you to uh, set the pill draw options as well. Um, there's a lot of different options for pill draw. Um, so you know you can have the program pill draw for you automatically. You can have it be manual entry if you use some kind of lottery device or, or draw the pill outside of the program. You can continue doing it that way and, and manual entry. Or you can set it to where there's actually a draw button that the driver can press and click on if you want to have a tablet at the back gate and draw their own number in the program. It's still going to be a, a, a random number, just like it would be if you did the random draw, but at least the driver feels they have some control in that case. Um, transponders, obviously the, the options are pretty easy. If there's no transponders or if you're going to use transponders, if you want to allow rentals or not, um, pretty easy stuff there. You can um, extend out the uh, pill draw number if you want to do 200 to 1 or something like that, whatever you want to do there. There is um, a lot of different options that we can do. I'm still not on the right event. May 1, race management. There we are. Okay, um, so again, all those same things apply. Um, in this case, we're gonna do the um, auto draw and we are going to use transponders, so no rentals, perfect, save. MRP Live. Um, is the third-party application 
that links um, the race manager or, or race management here, this program here, to whatever your live timing and scoring um, operation is, um, whether it's orbits or race manager. So you can use this screen to uh, to get to those things. In the third party application, in that third application, um, MRP Live is what it's called. There are three pieces of information that you're going to want um, in order to get this up and running. First is going to be the IP address of the computer that your um, live timing system, whether it's Orbit's or Race Manager, is on. Um, and then you're also going to want the port number. The port number is almost always 50,000. Um, it's a rare circumstance that it's not. Now some tracks do different things that are different and you know you might have customized that or whatever else. So I don't wanna say it's 100% of the time, but out of the box uh, on both of them is 50,000 and more often than not it stays there. IP address this and then the MRP Live code, that's the MRP Live connection code that you see here in the upper left. You copy this, paste it into MRP Live. You've got your IP address, you got your port number, you got your MRP Live code, and then you click connect. And that will connect um, my race pass, and it will connect your live timing computer, um, so you can go through that way. Um, there are a couple of other options in here. There's a send lineups button, but inside of MRP Live, there's also a get lineups button that works a little bit better. It's supposed to do the same thing, but I, I, I would recommend that you use the get lineups button inside of MRP Live. Um, the best lap view keywords um, tell the app based on the race name that you put in if the app should switch from the view that shows the running order um, to the view that shows um, based on time. Um, so, you know, obviously it work for things like qualifying time trials, whatever else, um, and that will allow, allow the app to show the, instead of running order, the time order for things like qualifying by default so the user at the end doesn't have to do anything. Download MRP Live, obviously download the application right there so you know what you're looking at. And then the broadcast ticker, um, the broadcast ticker you send to your broadcasting company. So if you're thinking somebody like Flow Racing or Advantage Racing TV or Dirt Vision or whatever else, you give this API URL to that broadcasting company, and it allows them to have the ticker at the top of the screen that shows running order on the broadcast so fans watching from home um, can, can you know, look at it that way. Also, you can view live timing right here, um, and we'll kind of show you that in just a moment here. We'll jump down to the entry screen. You can see I've already entered seven drivers. There's a couple of different ways to enter drivers. I'm gonna have to put in those transponder numbers, but there's a couple of different ways to enter drivers and I'll kind of show these to you. First off, every driver that's been to your racetrack in the class that you have selected is gonna show here on the left. Um, so you can select their name. There's the has forms checkbox that we had from registration. So we didn't, he didn't register. We didn't check it from him. We don't have his address. You can see this information right here. It by default picked his pill number. By default, his number is 34K. You can change that to whatever you'd like it to be. If there's owner information that you want to put in, you can search for and select an owner. Payout goes to owner. You can set as default. A lot of race teams will also have like an LLC or a limited liability or something like that with themselves as kind of a business owner over the race team. Um, so a lot of them will request that or if it's just a driver, you don't have to worry about it. But if you set it as default, it'll come up every week. Same thing with transponder number. You can type in their past transponder numbers. Or if you click in the box, first off, it'll show their most recent transponder numbers that you've selected. And you can select that as default as well if they have their own transponder. Lineup override will uh, start at the back for the heats or for all races. Um, and then obviously, if you want the competitor to be active on your competitor list, you leave it like that. Uh, I don't really see any reason to have them not be active. Um, but if you want them to be for whatever reason, you don't want them to show up, you can do it that way. So I'll add him there. Again, we will have to select some transponder numbers here. The reason I'm putting in these transponder numbers specifically is because Race Manager has a demo mode, and that's what I'm going to be using to go through this event. Um, and the demo mode only recognizes transponder numbers 1001 through 1010. There's a couple of other ways to check drivers in. 
If one of your drivers, if this is a pre-registration event, you can click in pre-entries. Everybody that pre-entered for the event in that class will show up right there. So you can find them that way. If you have a traveling series coming to your track and you want to see all the drivers who checked in previously with that series, that information will show with the by series drop down. Same thing with last event, pretty self-explanatory in the last event at that track. And if you are a series and you're going to a track, um, you can select by track and everybody who's at that track last time will show up there. You cannot check the has forms from this screen. It has to be done in registration. Um, so if he's given, if you're, if you're given forms on race night, um, then, you know, you go into registration, you know, after that and, and check it out and you can uh, check for, you can check that box there. Let's see. Um, yes, there is a way to select that pay is default going to the owner before the race night. When you add in that owner information and you make that owner default, it will always default to pay that owner unless you deselect it the second night. So that box will be selected there for you after the first time you put it in. If you make it default. Yeah. And again, Shelly, I, I just want to, you know, make it absolutely clear. We don't house the social security number information, so we can't do 1099s in the program. Um, but we do have a way to export the um, the payout if it was over six hundred dollars into QuickBooks or something like that. Um, so QuickBooks would be what you would use to to calculate the 1099s. Um, but, you know. Right, right, right. Just just a check mark. And I'll, I'll get with you, Shelly, and we'll talk over exactly what you're looking for and, and, and how to implement that um, and, and, you know, kind of, you know, it, it go down that path. We always want to make this process easier. I understand the shortcoming is the 1099s, but whatever we can do to make it easier, we'll, we'll try to work with you and do that. There's also another way, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to share my screen here, um, or excuse me, turn on my camera here so you guys can kind of see exactly what I'm talking about. So I've, um, I'm going to continue presenting, actually. I've got a card reader here. I just got it. Um, the, the other way to enter drivers in um, that's pretty slick and pretty fast is via the barcode. Um, so I've got my barcode up here. I click in the scan barcode box. And again, I'm, I'm, you can see me now. I turned my camera on, so I'll show you this. I've got my barcode scanner. And I've got my MRP card. A lot of you guys have seen these MRP cards. Um, super awesome. On the back side is a barcode scanner. Um, barcode scanner. Oh, and guess what? I made changes that needed to be saved first. So let's try that a second time. Scan the barcode. What? Well, let's try this a different way. Will assign myself a card first. Perfect. Okay. Now, if I remove myself, I should be able to scan the barcode. There we go. Perfect. Um, so, you want to make it a lot faster. You don't have to waste time searching for drivers in this entry screen. You can use the barcode scanner to do it that way. Um, so, this is myself. You can see because I entered, I have my address on file. I didn't select, I didn't check the has forms box there. Um, so, you know, uh, that's that's still an X. So that's how you know I haven't turned in the whatever whatever paper forms I need to turn in. There's my default. All the default information is right there. Lineup override. I want to show you how lineup override works. So I'll um, make myself start at the back all the time, which uh, is probably a good thing for everybody involved anyway. And I think I only need one more. Perfect. Okay, so I've got 10 drivers checked in. Um, that's the initial entry process. Um, Brenda, the there is a barcode scanner in the app, but it's actually um, designed to work with tickets. Um, so if you want to scan tickets, um, that's that's the that's the one that's in the app. The barcode scanner in the app does not work on the MRP cards at the back gate. You still have to purchase a scanner. 
Um, the one that I've got is like 40 bucks. I mean, it's, it's not a huge investment, um, but if you wanted to do it that way, we've actually got that link on our help center. I can send that to you as well. Perfect. So we'll jump out to races. Races is something that I would probably, you know, advise you to have, if, if not completely done, at least have an idea of what you want to do before you get to race night. You can always come in here and edit the number of heat races, um, you know, based on the number of the car count or whatever. Um, but we'll just, uh, we'll jump in here and I'll show you how this works. So we're going to add a heat race. We're going to add two heat races. They're going to be, you know, five laps in distance. We're going to send, uh, you know, the top two to tech. We'll leave it at pending. I'll add that so you can see what it looks like. Perfect. There's our heat races. They're there. They're available or whatever else. We'll add a feature now as well. We'll add an A feature, one A feature. We'll send that one 10 laps. We'll, we'll, I don't know, we'll have three go to tech, and we'll add that there. You can see when I've added the feature, there's some different options that show up here for the, uh, for the heat race configuration as well. Um, you know what? I am getting a, um, perfect. I'm getting an, uh, will you register a new person from that screen? You know what? I will go back and do that. I'll show you exactly how that works. There's a search button up here. So you can actually search for any driver's name, um, which of course means that I'm drawing a blank here in terms of stock car drivers in the area, but you just search for their name. You can type their name in, shows up here, whatever else. If you do get to an event where you've you got a driver who's never run at any racetrack before, this is their first night of racing, there's a create new button at the bottom of this list and you can create a, a new driver that way. So that's how you would do a, a driver that doesn't show on this list. Jump back down here to races. Um, you, the options that show up here, um, again, two heat races. If you were going to do a passing points format where you were going to add together the, uh, the, the combined points uh, and passing points for, uh, for the two heat races, you would change this bubble to say from group instead of per race, um, because obviously you're, you're taking the group points at that point. Um, but otherwise, if you're running any other format that's not passing points, you do per race. This is how many you want to take to the feature. That comes into play if you're running a B main. If you want to take you know, the top five from each heat race to the feature and everybody else to the B main, you can do it that way. And if you want to run a crazy Boone Super Nationals lineup where you're starting them three wide, you can do it that way as well, or even single file if that's, uh, if that's what you're looking for as well. So a couple of different ways to do that, but um, there we go. So our races are input. Jump over to lineups now. Um, and this is, um, you know, lineups are something that you're definitely going to want to know what you're looking for, um, you know, kind of um, – you, you want to know what you're looking for kind of before you get to race night again because you don't want to be searching here um, with a race night as well. Um, and Linda, when you do the uh, when you do the create new option in the driver entry, it's creating a brand new profile for a brand new driver as no, they've never raced a race before anywhere. So it would have you put in all that information, um, you know, whether it's their address, their number, their name, all that stuff. It would be creating it from scratch at that point. Um, but when we go to lineups here, um, we'll jump in here. Um, there's so many different lineups to go through. I want to highlight one thing specifically. Um, IMCA changed their um, their lineup procedures this year, their, their rules for lineups. So we actually have two in there for IMCA. You'll see a pre-2021 IMCA lineup um, option and then a regular IMCA lineup option. Um, obviously the pre 2021 20, is the old stuff <clears throat> and then the new stuff uh, will be just regular IMCA. So we'll jump through here. I'm just going to do the heat directly from pill draw, calculate the heat races. So you can see what that looks like now in the pill draw number 23 myself was not the last pill draw. I drew, let's see a 20. There's obviously higher pill draw numbers. But because I selected in that lineup override that I was going to start at the tail, um, it, it pushed me to the tail automatically. So you can kind of see how that's going to work. Gives a little arrow to, you know, to identify that that's what happened there. Otherwise, lined up straight up by a pill draw. For every single um, heat race lineup and feature lineup, every lineup option here, there's three buttons that you can look at down here. You can share this lineup to social media, Facebook and Twitter right from here. You can uh, give a media format, which I use for post-race recaps pretty commonly. 
and then go to results is the other button. I'll show you a couple of other things here if you don't have a, a lineup that you want to have created and you want to do it manually. If I select heat race number one and I click on a driver's name over here, it'll bring them into the lineup in the order that I clicked them on. Um, that's consistent with uh, typing in the number down here. So you can do that as well. And if you get everybody in the lineup and you decide that it's not correct or you want to change something around, you can uh, click and drag a driver's name and uh, change the lineup order that way. Um, so there's different options there. And, you know, if I wanted to add somebody to uh, the other heat race, I just select the other heat race and they go right over there. Perfect. Um, so once the lineups are calculated, we'll hit save as lineups in the lower right hand corner. When you click save as lineups, what that does is it makes them publicly available on the app. So people are refreshing their app. They're trying to find uh, the information. And, um, and as soon as you hit save as lineups, then the lineups are public for them to be able to view and look at. When you go to your MRP live application and hit get lineups now, that pushes the lineups into your live timing and scoring computer. Um, and that, you know, basically gives them the information right there, right then and there. Um, the, it gives them the, um, it gives them the, the individual heat races or the groups in orbits. Um, and it gives them the class, the, the competitors list. It gives them the starting order, which is runs in orbits as well. Um, so it gives them a couple of different things there. Um, and that's, you know, basically what allows them to go through that way. When we go to line, our results then, because heat races are finished, there's a couple of different options in terms of um, putting in results information. You can see in the last pending race, that was the race that I completed and finished in race manager. Um, I want to remind, I want to let everybody know, um, I'm going to do a full session on orbits and on race manager later on. Um, so if you guys use those live timing options, you know, take a look at that schedule for the different webinars and make sure you get in there for uh, live timing information because that's going to be that's going to be valuable as well. Um, but similarly to lineups, if you click on the name of the driver, it brings the driver over in the finishing order. You can also type in their number here and hit enter. It brings them over in the finishing order. You can click last pending race here and it'll import the information there. Again, I know there's only five cars in the heat race, but because demo mode and race manager uses all 10 transponder options every single time it brought all 10 over. So you can do it that way as well. There's also, no, oh, I didn't say it, look at that. There's also, uh, when you're in Race Manager and you, um, and it doesn't upload automatically for whatever reason, if there's an issue in that process, you can upload the file and go and find the Excel um, document that Race Manager exports um, and choose the file to upload that way, or you can paste in plain text if that's what you want to do as well. Really, I don't see any instance and where paste in plain text will come up, um, but it is an option there available as well. In this particular case, I'll click on the names. I'll save as completed. Saving as completed does the same thing as uh, save, saving the lineups previously as so it pushes it publicly to the app. This is also where you can put in if somebody didn't finish, didn't start, got disqualified, got black flagged. There's also a no passing points option. So if somebody elects to start at the tail in a passing points format, they basically don't get the extra credit for starting at the back when they weren't or when they wouldn't have or weren't supposed to basically. So you can do it that way. Heat race number one, results are in. Heat race number two, we'll run those results in as well. Save those as completed. Again, there's a share to social media button right here. There's a media format button right here. So you can copy and paste that into um, whatever, you know, if, if you're writing post-race recaps or whatever else, um, put that information in. There we go. We'll go back to lineups, and now it's A-Main time, so we'll calculate our A-Main lineups. If you want to line them up straight up from heats and Bs, you can do it that way. A passing points lineup, there's a lot of different things you can do straight up from qualifying. Again, there are so many lineup options in the program, so you really want to have an idea of what your format is and what lineup option you're going to choose before you get to the races because you really don't want to be sitting there wondering what you're going to do when guys are waiting for lineups to get published. Because I elected to start at the tail, again, I get pushed to last. We'll save those as lineups. 
move on to results. There we go. We'll save those as completed. Our race night has been completed. The final checkered flag is flown. Um, and that's how that's how uh, it, it finishes right there. You'll be able to see in MRP Live right here. This is where any of the live timing information would have come from. Um, so you, I did live timing for that one heat race. So you would have been able to watch live timing right here from that one heat race. Um, you know, so you can do it that way. This is the same information that the fans will see on the MRP app when they open it up. We'll get into points and pay here as well. Um, adding points and pay. Um, in terms of entering a name for your points groups, um, we've taken to always by default putting in points group one as your points group name. There's going to be certain instances where you have multiple points groups in the same night if you have different races going to different schedules or something like that. That's really intricate. It's really rare. And obviously, we'll help with that. But for the most part, we'll always do um, points group one right here. Um, schemes, we talked about, uh, you know, in the first session, and we'll cover those again later on in another session. Um, but schemes are basically a way for you to set what your point structure is going to be and also set what your pay structure is going to be. Um, so right here, whatever your scheme is, you can select that scheme as opposed to doing manual entry. I'll leave it on manual entry for now so you'll be able to see that, and then I'll leave the uh, – I'll leave the, uh, the, the the pay scheme as a scheme so you can see how those two different things operate. If you want the points to apply to just your drivers, if you want to have owner's points apply as well or team points apply, you can do things that way. Um, if you have a driver who, for whatever reason, is not eligible to receive points, uh, if they're not going to be able to run um, for points as well, you can um, have you can uncheck their name here. If you want everybody to move up a spot, check that box. If you just want that spot to be left empty, um, you, you can do that. So I will add that points group. Again, you can edit owners or team points or just competitor points. Um, I did not put in a scheme for points. I did for pay, but not for points. So if you don't have a scheme prepared, and this is a good example of why you do want a scheme prepared, you would have to sit here and type in for each individual driver how many points they got. You'd have to do that for every single driver all the way down the list to the very end, um, which, you know, if it's late at night after your race, you really you really don't want to do that. Um, so, it, But I did put in a pay scheme so you can see that the pay structure has already been put in by default because of the scheme. You'll notice there's the adjustment box over here for points points and for pay. Um, if you want, if you have a scheme put in, you'll see that this initial box is grayed out. So if you have bonus money or you want to dock somebody money or bonus points or anything else, you can put in an adjustment here and, um, and adjust their points or pay that way, um, you know, depending on, you know, what they've earned or didn't earn. And you can also give them extra points for passing points as well. Although if you're going to do passing points, I definitely would recommend to have a scheme because you hate to have to sit here and look at how many cars each guy passed and calculate it yourself. You can also do points and pay for heat races, um, for show up points, for qualifying, for B mains, for every, basically any race that you run, you can add points or pay um, as you see fit, or of course leave it at zero if you'd like to do that as well. At the very bottom of the screen, there's this create payments button. That button is very important because that's what pushes the information to what we call our 1099 report. Our 1099 report in one report, it won't calculate your 1099s. We don't store social security number information, but it will in one report show you all of the drivers and owners and how much they made as long it was as it was more than $600 and right next to them, all of their addresses as well. So you can print that information off. You can export that information and put it into QuickBooks. You can do whatever you need with that information and it has it all there in one sheet. So when you export it, then you just combine that with the exported list of social security numbers that you have in a different application and you can create your 1099s and whatever program you use that way. That create payments button is very important to be able to click. What that does, you'll see, is it brings you to this screen in season management where you see the payment information for every group. So you can come in and verify it. If you need to make changes, you can do that there. You can create checks here. Choose the, if you have the, the special printer and paper that you need, you can enter the starting check number, um, select the, 
the style of layout that you need for your check printing computer or whatever else and print their checks right from my race pass. There's also a button here to export this information into QuickBooks. Um, so you can download that information directly and put it into your QuickBooks account that way. There is no default option to a cash option for payouts, um, although you'll still be able to keep track of what everybody made in here. And honestly, if you're just doing cash payouts, then there's no reason to mess with any of the check information as well. Just press create payments, save this information and get out of it and, and you can you can uh, you know send them as cash as well. And I see Chris is in here answering questions. So when you email support at myracepass.com with questions, it'll either be me or Chris answering them more often than not. So that is all. Uh, that's basically our race night from start to finish. You know, jumping in, starting a race night, um, you know, and, and going, running all your heat races, your format, all of those things, all the way into the feature. And again, we're going to do another session, look at live timing information as well. I do want to quickly show you adding online tickets as well. Um, to an event, adding online tickets is pretty cool, but there's also a number of new features that we've, um, th 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 there's a number of new features that we put in um, to kind of make this uh, a special, and, and Trish, I'll just tell you, um, there is no um, QuickBooks online, it's all the QuickBooks um, installable application. Um, I know that that's something that development has looked at in the past, I, I wouldn't be able to give you an update on where we're at with that, but right now it's all the installable application. Um, but we'll add tickets to an event here. Of course, you can do that by schedule or whatever else. So we'll just uh, select the same event that we were already working with, the May 1st Stock Car Special event. We'll add tickets to this. You can, and there's a lot of different things that you can do with tickets here. So I'll kind of run through all of the features. A lot of them are pretty self-explanatory. I'll run through them very quick, fairly quickly. You obviously can set availability, time and date. You can set a pre-sale availability. And down here for each individual ticket type, what the pre-sale price is compared to the regular price. Gates opening and races start, you can have that printed on every ticket so everybody knows exactly what they're getting. What you want your rain check or your rain out policy if the, uh, if, if the show is canceled, you know, whether you want them to be refunded automatically or a rain check for the next event of, the, of your choosing basically. Um, I'll tell you that in registration, we disperse all of the funds to you through PayPal with ticketing, that's not the case. Ticketing will actually go ACH directly to your bank account. Um, so we, we have an ACH form that you'll fill out and we'll send those funds directly to you so there's no fees at all. One of the nice things about that is, is that if the event does rain out or whatever else, because we hold the funds until after you confirm that the event is out, then um, we actually will handle the refunds for you. So if your event rains out, you don't have to worry about refunding anybody's money, getting a hold of your bank, getting a hold of anybody. We'll handle the refunds. And if the event happens, you go in and confirm that the event happened, and we'll send you the money the following business day. Or, or within two to three business days, I believe, is that ACH process. But more often than not, it's fairly quickly. There's a whole heck of a lot of uh, by default ticket types that you can put in. You merely can select the one that you want. If you want an adult GA and a kid's GA, you can do it that way. Again, pre-sale price, number of available. If you leave the number of available at minus one, that's an infinite number. You can all, they're, they're always are gonna be there. Um, if you have the availability at any other amount, we'll sell that many tickets. If you get to that many tickets, then there'll be a message that those tickets are sold out when fans go to buy them. If you want the tickets to be named something else, you nearly just override the name. And you can have them named whatever you want. Another opportunity for you to sell some advertising this time on your on your tickets. So we can do it that way. One of those three ticket types right there. And I must enter a price for all of the selected tickets. Okay. Well, let me do that then. There we go. So our stock car special tickets are there. If I'm not selecting any ticket and I'm just on a ticket management screen, there's a couple of options that I want to show you here. Ticket information is largely going to kind of show you um, information that the fan will see on the back of the tickets, including rain policy, sales are final, things of that nature. Um, so, you know, if you want to make changes to whatever your policies are, you know, you can get a hold of us. We can, you know, work with you on that and what that's going to look like. If you go to the thank you note, obviously. You know, fans will get a thank you note as well um, when they purchase tickets. 
Again, if you want to make any changes to that, we can work with you um, to get a hold of us. And then there's coupons as well. And uh, coupons, um, you can use. These are the coupons that we've got put in just for, um, just for, just so you can. Uh, these are the coupons that we put in just by default, just as an example. But you can put whatever you want in here as long as it's an image. So if you want, if you've got a sponsor that's putting up, you know, a discount to the restaurant or whatever else, you can put those tickets on here. So you can do that for for all of the tickets from here in the ticket management screen, but also when you select the individual tickets to edit, there's another coupon screen, so you can actually override those coupons and uh, and have you know coupons in there as well um, for each individual event. So you have a special event sponsor, you can give them more credibility that way. You can share that the tickets are available to your social medias here, um, Twitter and Facebook. We have a ticket window um, view. Um, and I'm not 100% sure if it does come up on, yeah, because this is on um, Sandbox, it's not going to show you exactly what it would show in a live environment, um, but it'll give you an opportunity to, to scan the tickets. If you'd like, you can scan the tickets in this view, um, and so you can see the, the tickets that have not yet been scanned, and when you go to redeem tickets, you'll be able to see the, the tickets that have been redeemed, and again, because it's in Sandbox, I don't have the ability to scan a ticket right here as well, uh, but again, Add your tickets, a ticket poster. If you have an event flyer, you can put that there, and that's what fans will see when they're buying their tickets. Um, a picture to put on the ticket itself, all of those things. You'll see this blue Get Funds or Fulfill Refunds screen right here. Um, that's what you'll click on to either tell us, A, the event happened and we need our money, or B, um, the event didn't happen and we need you to send those refunds out. So that, that's the button that you click to go through that process. There's a verification code that gets sent through text message to the main admin, things like that. But that's that's where you would go to, to make that happen. A couple of other options. If you you'll see that these are grayed out right now. Um, if you click on them, they'll become colored, and that's how you know they're active. Um, if it's featured, it's showing up on your website in a in the featured section at the top of the screen, which is basically everybody now. We don't have very many websites left that don't have that feature. Um, if it's not, if the dollar sign is not green, if you click on it, it turns green. Then those tickets are for sale to the public, and they're active, and things of that nature. There's one other thing that I'd like to show you quickly in regards to ticket management, and it's a brand new screen, brand new that we just released. I want to say maybe a month ago, and it's uh, it's actually it's a dashboard that is ticket analytics. So as soon as that loads, I'll be able to show you that. Um, but there's a lot of great information in here, and it really it does a lot um, to kind of help you market or help you understand where to market your tickets and, and things of that nature. So let me go through this. This ticket analytics screen, again, brand new, um, shows you a heat map, and this is where their zip code location is when they buy the tickets. Um, if they're in a metropolitan city or any kind of city or town, It'll show you what town that is. And to me, this is just, if I'm looking at this as a track promoter, this is telling me I've been doing too much radio advertising in Marshall, Minnesota. I need to stop because most of my customers are coming from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And that's, um, you know, that's, that's just really valuable right there. Gives you information in terms of distance traveled, um, how far out before the event they purchased the tickets, the price that they purchased that, depending on the type of ticket that's sold. Um, gender, age, different demographics, and then event by event. So you can actually look at this on an event by event basis as opposed to your entire um, uh, you know, season. So if you're uh, a track that run, really only ever runs modifieds and you run a big late model show and add event tickets to it, um, this will be an opportunity for you to go event by event and see if your ticket sales were different for that late model share, show compared to modifieds. Um, if the demographics are different, what, what's different about it, if they're coming from different places, things of that nature. And actually, there's a report at the bottom of the screen that will give you the um, individual information for each customer that bought a ticket, including name and email address. So you can, if you have some kind of email marketing platform that you want to you know, put that stuff into, you can upload it right there, and you can start marketing directly to those customers if you're going to run an event like that again if you know the demographics are a lot different so there's a lot of things here in ticket analytics that we're really excited about things that are really cool and i think are gonna you know really be a benefit to a lot of racetrack promoters and series promoters basically anybody that sells tickets um so 
Um, we're, we're, we're up against it here, but I'm okay with going over if you guys have questions. Um, does anybody have any questions um, on their face right now about anything that they've seen right here? Um, again, remember, if you, if you think of questions later, you can send them to me via email. You can send it to support at myracepass.com. Send me via email. We'll, we'll get back to you as soon as we can tomorrow as well. Um, but does anybody have any questions now in terms of what they saw? Yeah, Facebook has been deleting events. Facebook's been doing a lot of things that kind of suck, but it's still a part of life, I think. I would like to shout out here as well. Obviously, the uh, webinars are just getting started today for the first time. Wednesday, we're going to do a little bit more. Um, so keep an eye on that. Wednesday, March 3rd, there'll be two more sessions. The second session, uh, we'll really both sessions will be with the Wasoda lens, but the second session, I'm going to take a long look at the uh, lineup options for Wasoda and those kinds of things. Um, so if that's, uh, you know, if, if you're here with Wasoda, make sure Wednesday the 3rd, um, you're looking at coming back. 